We're doing both. The UAW is in the process of moving money away from Chase to other banks. Really, it's not what we wanted to do. We hoped that Chase would sit down with R.J. Reynolds and make sure R.J. Reynolds sat down and bargained fairly with Flock. We were also hoping that they would work with moratorium now and do the two-year moratorium and, and sign up for the hardest hit program. It's just unconscionable that here is a government giving them millions, hundreds of millions of dollars to help people and they're not doing it. So we are doing both. We are going to take our own union funds that are in Chase and move them to more people-friendly uh, banks that will work with communities, will work with workers, and we're also asking our membership to do the same. I, I don't know. That's a, it's hundreds of millions of dollars. How's that? Well, that's a wonderful question. Uh, you see uh, the, how backward things are for agricultural workers in this country. We don't have the right to file uh, complaints with the National Labor Relations Board because in 1935, when the National Labor Relations Act was passed, you got to remember the people who ran Congress were the Southern Dixiecrats, and President Roosevelt could not get the, uh, that act passed without the help of the Southern Dixiecrats, and those Southern Dixiecrats could not see it, uh, that the, the agricultural workers in those days were all black, and they couldn't see that black workers would have the same rights as their white counterparts, so they excluded agricultural workers from the National Labor Relations Act, and we've been excluded ever since, and we've been excluded in every labor law reform since then, uh, including today. To this day, agricultural workers are not covered by the National Labor Relations Act. We have no right, no process to complain, to file complaints with the government to clean up those conditions. I, if, I hope uh, that J.P. Morgan Chase, seeing that we're serious, we're taking these actions, a, a number of private individuals, a number of churches, other unions will be following suit. Uh, we hope that they wake up and it won't be necessary to take further actions. But if it is, we will not leave any stone unturned to get justice for workers in the, in the fields and in the farms, and we'll not leave any stone unturned to get work, workers and our friends and families and the communities treated fairly under the mortgage foreclosure laws. And I'm also excited to see that in New York State, was in the New York Times, that six large unions and the controller of New York State are pressuring banks on the same issue on, on foreclosures, and uh, not surprisingly, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase is one of the banks being targeted in New York also. Mm. Good afternoon, Stephanie with WFHA. I have a question for Bob King. If you knew of the impact on union membership and foreclosures, and you could talk a bit about maybe how some of them have impacted. I don't, I don't have statistics on it uh, today. We just know that there are a lot of our members who are hurting, who have worked their whole lives, and because of the downturn in the economy, have been laid off and are stressed like many other citizens and are having their homes foreclosed. And one more question just about, I'm uh, not sure who would answer, about if there would be another bank or other banks that would be targeted. Well, actually, we're just taking our lead from the UAW. First, you start with this company and you get a deal, and then you cart it over to Bank of America, and then to uh, Wells Fargo. Uh, you know, Chase has a chance here to be heroes, to, to lead out on this and then to draw money to them. Instead, they've chosen to just not even answer uh, or fulfill the promises they made to even call us into a conversation. So what I want to keep emphasizing is we are not powerless. We will keep this drive going until banks that will help us have the money, and banks that won't do not have our money. Diane Bukowski from the Voice of Detroit. Um, I'm wondering if this is 
I, it's definitely connected. October 2nd, November 2nd, we're asking people across America to stand up. We want a community of caring. We want a community of conscience. We've seen so much division, so much trying to pit one group of workers or one group of people against another group of people. This is a wonderful opportunity for people who really do believe in brotherhood and sisterhood and caring about others in community to come together and take a stand, take an action. The world only changes if we each say, what can I do? What's my part in the change? So it's definitely connected to October 2nd and definitely connected to a broad struggle for social and economic justice. Yeah. So UAW, SEIU, steel workers, AFSME, all the building trades, all the unions are encouraging our membership to come out. We've had a great response in the UAW. We've got buses coming from all over Michigan. Uh, so I'm very excited that we're going to, that people do care about one another and people are showing that they care by joining in the march and then keeping up and working through November 2nd and then probably even more important than that is understanding you never stop working for justice. You, it, voting in one election does not get you justice. Right. It's a constant work, marches, rallies, petitions, phone banking, whatever is necessary to keep moving forward because as soon as you stop marching and working for justice, you begin to go backwards. So we are excited about re-engaging our membership and re-energizing our membership in the UAW to be in the, in the broader struggle for social and economic justice. Paul DeMar. Well now, for me, every day is October 2nd. Uh, I grew up as a migrant farm worker working in those fields, living in chicken coops and barns, migrating from Texas to Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Wisconsin, Florida, North Carolina. I've picked crops, everything you can imagine. So uh, people like me are fed up with this history, with this life, and every day is on October 2nd. If there's a march somewhere, we're going to be there. If there's a demonstration somewhere, we're going to be there. If you're going to walk somewhere, somewhere, we're going to walk there with you. We got people from, farm workers from North Carolina going uh, uh, to Washington October 2nd. We got folks from Toledo going. Uh, if, if somebody's doing something to, uh, to stand up for their rights, we're going to be there because this is just the beginning. This press conference is just the beginning. You got to let this flourish. You got to spread like wildfire. I don't know if you've ever seen a fire in an alfalfa field because, because it grows underneath the green and you don't see it till it's all up in, when the entire field is, uh, is up in flames. And that's what we do because, see, we got to just keep after that, find enough people who got accounts at Chase. I don't care if you have to go one by one. My own daughter who lives north of Livonia, she's got her accounts at Chase. I talked to her this morning. They're going to go next week and close that account and tell the bank manager why they're closing the account. My grandson is going to be out there leafleting in front of that bank. I'm going to get my, my daughters. I'm going to get my sons. I'm going to get my relatives. I'm going to get my friends. I'm going to get my neighbors. I'm going to go one by one until there's enough people to make it difference that sooner or later Chase is going to get the match and said we're losing too much money you see you say how can you farm workers who've got nothing how can you compel an RJ Reynolds and a, and a Chase bank to sit down and negotiate with you well I'll tell you what the formula is is that we got nothing and nothing is a lot because you got nothing to lose see and all we got is time we got time to go find one account after the other, and sooner or later, the money that Chase has is going to run out before time because there's a lot more time than there is money, and that's our formula for overcoming that obstacle. What we're going to do also here is challenge the, the houses of faith. If you are a mosque, a synagogue, a temple, a church, and you don't take on this issue, then I suggest you close the doors. There's, there's absolutely no way that you can stand for people and read your own sacred text and not stand up while whole neighborhoods are being devoured. Right. So if you're listening to this and you're a pastor or an imam, a rabbi, uh, this is the time to stand up. This is the time to understand your scripture drives you out from beyond the sanctuaries into the street. So let us know. Call Central Church. Call call Solidarity House, call whoever you need to, get on board, because without action, 
your words are worthless. 